Hi, I'm Justin Flans with Tab Performance. Today I'm going to walk you through the installation of a Tab Performance fuel manager on a Harley Davidson V Rod. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and remove the air box cover. To do that on, on any V Rod, you pop the seat, there's a little thumb screw, you turn it counterclockwise, and then go ahead and lift up. And then gently pull up and back. All right, next we're going to go ahead and remove the IAT sensor. Um, you can either pull this clip or all you really have to do is push down on it and it'll wiggle out. All right, next we're going to remove the airbox cover. You just take a flathead screwdriver and we'll pop off these six clamps, three on each side and one on the back. Ready? All right, and then don't forget there's also one clamp um, on the front right underneath here. Again, you can just use a screwdriver and pop that open. And then your air box should go ahead and lift out. All right, now we're going to go ahead and remove the air filter. To do that, you can just remove this thumb screw. All right, now we're going to go ahead and remove the velocity stacks so we can get this uh, bottom part of the air box out. Um, to do this, we're just going to pull up these O-rings a little bit. Then on a five millimeter Allen wrench, I'm just going to go ahead and After you've removed the velocity stacks, you can just go ahead and lift this up. There is a tube you can see that runs through the back end and then through the center. Um, so what we're going to have to do is kind of push that out and then we're going to um, actually unplug it. All right, so you can see um, this was the hose that connected to that center piece in the air box. So we unhooked that and then this is a pretty tight fit but you just need to pop it out the back side of the, the air box cover so you can remove the bottom. Um, now what we're going to do is go ahead and install um, the ground wire on the fuel manager. So what we'll do, that'll keep everything grounded and um, prevent any damage to electronics. Uh, so we'll just remove this bolt here, this nut. Slide that on there. All right, the next thing we're going to do is remove your or disconnect your rear and front uh, injector plugs. Uh, it's really tight in here, um, but just you can take a needle nose plier. Okay. So for these, there's a little uh, wire crimp. Uh, you just push up on it, and you'll be able to disconnect the plug. So here you can see, here's the, the metal crimp. You're just going to push up with your finger and then that'll allow you to disconnect that plug. Um, they should be labeled on your bike, uh, R for rear and an F for front. Um, if they're not on your bike, make sure you're paying close attention to the plugs and where they're going. All right, now we're going to go ahead and run the wire harness through. Uh, so just kind of put the wire harness in line um, with the factory harness. And we're going to take our plugs here um, and kind of feed them right underneath the throttle body. So you, it's a tight fit. You just kind of got to stick them in there a little bit. And then we'll come through on the other side and uh, pull them through the rest of the way. The one going to the front has the red and orange wire on the smaller plug and the red and white with the orange stripe going into the front engine. Alright, now what we're going to do is tap a 12 volt uh, power source. 
Um, so to do that, what we're going to do is disconnect this throttle position sensor here. And you can just kind of pull this wire up. And you'll see there's a gray wire. Um, it's got a purple stripe on it. That's the wire we're going to tap. So um, if it's really covered up, uh, you might cut back some of this um, nylon strapping. And we're going to tap uh, this wire into there using the supplied posi tap. So first step what we're going to do is uh, unscrew the, the red end and we're going to feed this gray wire through that and it's going to make a connection here. Um, we're just going to go ahead and screw that down Make sure that's in there nice and tight. Um, next we're going to unscrew the gray end and you see it's slotted. We're going to slip that around the gray wire and then you'll see there's a little pin and when we screw it back together uh, that pin will pierce the casing on that gray wire and make a connection. All right, now if you're installing a fuel manager for a 2002 to 2007, you can go ahead and skip these next couple steps because you won't have an O2 sensor on your bike. For a 2008 through 2011, the O2 sensor plugs are going to be in the same spot, but the eliminators you use are going to look a little different. They're going to look um, similar to a plug like this. For the 2009 and up, um, it's going to be the four pin plugs um, and they're color coordinated um, so what you're going to do is you just go ahead and disconnect that plug there and um, so that your your check engine light doesn't show up we're going to go ahead and eliminate that plug so this eliminator is just going to slide right back over that and you can leave this um, open or if you'd like you can you can take it out completely Okay, once you've removed that cap screw, you're going to go ahead and pull down on the bottom of this and then it'll slide right off. Um, you can see that's there's a little peg that fits into that. That's what you need to pull down so you can slip it off. All right, so again, we're going to go ahead and cap off this uh, O2 sensor. Um, if you All right, we're getting close to being ready to put everything back together. Um, so a few notes. Uh, on the older style models, um, the instructions have you in installing the, the tuner right up here by the battery. Um, on the newer models, uh, with the snorkel, there's no room. So you can just fight, feed the unit through and install it kind of over on the side, which we'll show you here in a little bit. Um, when you're putting everything back together, a few things to keep in mind you want to make sure that your figure eight gasket here is in good shape no rips tears uh, kinks anything like that when you're putting uh, the bottom of the air box together uh, it's very important that uh, this o-ring and everything slides back down uh, into the engine that's an oil line if you don't get a good seal on that when you connect it back together and you start up your engine you'll get an oil leak through there and it'll smell like gas um, the other thing that uh, people commonly forget to put back together when they're throwing, when they're putting stuff back together is this IAT sensor. So again, once you get everything back together, make sure you plug that IAT sensor back in. All right, once you've got everything situated where you want it, um, I want to go ahead and, you know, keep things clean and uh, zip tie some of these harnesses out of the way. Um, okay. All right, so this is the map dial um, you're going to use that to select which uh, map for your bike instead of exhaust this is a v-rod muscle um, with a 2.5 inch baffle um, so what we're going to do is going to go ahead and take a small flathead screwdriver and you'll see uh, on this crosshair one of them's got a little bit of a point and so what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and turn that point um, until we feel it click in to number five and you can kind of feel it 
click in and if it if you don't feel it you can turn it around a little bit and then feel it click into number five now these are your tuning dials you shouldn't need to mess with these um, but you can if if you're having some issues uh, lean any any rpm range out uh, or richen it up these three tuning dials correspond to your rpm range uh, the low is 0 to 3,000, your mid is 3 to 6,000 RPM, and your high is 6 to 9. Most of the time you'll never need to really touch the high. Uh, usually if there's any issues you can just um, tweak the, the low and the mid. Um, and the indicator on these dials is two very small dots, um, and it's the crosshair in between those two small dots. See it come on solid.